Welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use some of the painting tools in Photoshop. And we'll look at how to set Photoshop up as a, as a painting program. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. We're not going to do <laughs> much. We're not, it's not going to be a masterpiece that we're going to create. But I want to show you the tools. Hand-drawn illustrations and painting is not my not what I practice frequently, and so I am reasonably bad at it. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, hopefully this tutorial will show you the tools to enable you to do amazing things that um, are really challenging for me to do. So, uh, uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to go to Create New in Photoshop, and let's just use the tabloid preset 11 by 17, 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to hit I'm going to select it. I'm going to click create. And the reason for this, right, we want to use like a really nice high quality image if we're going to be doing this. Now, if you happen to have a drawing tablet of some sort or a modern um, iPad, you can actually um, use your iPad uh, as a drawing surface for Photoshop. Um, and you can also buy drawing tablets. Now, Wacom is the brand that makes um, that's been making, you know, drawing tablets and things forever. Um, and there's several other brands that are available now. Um, you know, Wacom is definitely the most expensive for, for what you get. Um, but they are sort of the industry leader. Um, but then there's some other really oftentimes very inexpensive tablets that are out there. And so some of and just so you know, if you've, if you've never used one before and you're interested in getting one, they can range anywhere from $35 to um, $3,000. <laughs> uh, the, and the differences are the cheaper ones, the ones that are usually under $100, um, are a tablet that you draw on, but it has no screen on it, right? So you can, um, you're just drawing and you have to look at your computer screen, right? Which is weird for people at first. Um, the more expensive ones tend to be, if it has a screen, it's somewhere between 250 and, you know, several thousand dollars. The several thousand dollar ones are, um, full windows PCs that are a drawing tablet. And usually they're big. They can go from, you know, being the size of about a, you know, like a 12 inch iPad all the way up to a 24 inch monitor, um, that you can draw on. Um, and usually those set on your desk. And so, um, yeah, so there are lots of options. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe someday I'll, I'll actually have a tablet where I can draw on the screen as I'm, as I'm working. But currently I just have an inexpensive Wacom tablet. So the tablets, um, the other things they allow you to do is it's not just a way to track your motion, but it tracks pressure. And the better quality ones also do brush tilt. Um, which is something that Photoshop can take advantage of. Um, and it's just like a much more natural way to work if you're if you're doing any sort of drawing or motion, right? You, I'm, and I'm working on that right now. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and look at some of these tools. Now, I was using it, I did this tutorial once before, and uh, I just really wanted to redo it. So I'm going to use one of these, the soft round brush is what we usually defaults to. Mode should be normal, opacity should be 100, um, and I'm just going to turn all of these options off. Um, okay, so if we just use the tool in its default state, um, you'll see that right now it's really small. Um, and, you know, if I click and drag, if you're using a mouse or if I just draw with the um, tablet, I get you know, surprisingly enough, a green line, um, which is the color I have chosen. If you're not seeing anything, there's a chance that your foreground color is set to white. So if I put this on white, right, if you're not seeing anything, it's probably because your your color is current, your foreground color is currently white, and you'll want to change that to something else. It doesn't matter what, um, right? And then you can, you can draw. Um, no. Ta-da! <laughs> that's, that's painting in Photoshop. Um, now, there's a couple other things that we need to do. So first, something you might notice is that this looks different probably than what your window looks like, specifically with how the tools are laid out over here. So if I go up to Window and I go to Workspace, you'll see that there are several options in here. And the option that I have currently selected is Painting. 
right? And so if I go back to the essentials, which is the default, um, right, you'll see that it, it kind of changes things. There's properties and adjustments in here instead, and I get this sidebar that I never ever use um, there. But if I, so if I go to window and I go to workspace, I can come over and go to painting. The other way to get there is this little icon up here in the top right. If I click on, if I click on that, I can also go down to painting and switch. And basically what this does is it lays out all the painting tools. Now the key painting tools are obviously the brush tool. Um, but in addition, it's um, right, there's this brushes menu. So there's, there's a ton of brushes in here that are available, right? If I just, you can kind of see as I scroll that they just keep going and going and going forever. In addition, you can go up to this little menu here and you can actually um, uh, click on get more brushes and um, when you do that, it'll take you to an Adobe site, um, an Adobe page, and um, there are, you know, another set of brushes that this guy, Kyle, um, uses. And you have to log in with your credentials um, in order to access that, right? But so there's other brushes there. There's other brush packs and things that are available for purchase and sometimes on f for free as well. So I'm going to close that. Let me go back to Photoshop real quick. Okay. So if you need more than these brushes, they're available. The other tools that are important to note um, are the brush settings. And so we'll talk about that a little bit as well in just a bit. Okay. And these allow you to do all sorts of customization to your brushes, but we'll do a separate tutorial for that one. Okay. So um, what I would like you to do for a bit is you can just experiment with different brushes, right? You could pause this and you could just, um, right? start working with the different brushes and see right how they function so you know i like that i also want you to note in this brushes panel here the brushes i've most recently used um are popped up here so i can switch back and forth so it's like oh i was using soft round right and so i want to use that again or i really like this whatever this paper brush um and so i'm going to go ahead and use that all right, something else to note, um, there are a couple settings up here that are frequently used in your options. You can um, click over here and you can adjust your size, right? So, right, we can make that bigger or smaller. We can adjust the angle and we can, oops, we can adjust the angle and we can, right, also make this um, narrower, more like a calligraphy brush, right? So um, I can make that thinner. Um, this oops this angle here is something that if i have brush tilt turned on can be adjusted with my brush um, i'm going to go ahead and choose a different color uh sure there we go um just so I, we have some difference here um so again size i can choose my brushes here note there's a search bar so i can search for brushes um the settings thing just allows us to have um, you know, a few more options. You can see I can import brushes. Um, I don't, you have to go find those. I don't have any additional ones on my menu. Um, we can create a new brush, which we'll talk about later. Um, and then, so there's also the mode, right? This is the way that the brush interacts with the other strokes on the layer I'm currently on, right? So if I want to, you know, go crazy, I could click on difference, right? And when I paint with this, you can see that even though I have this blue color, it's actually painting the opposite. Um, I'm gonna go back up all the way to normal. Um, I can adjust my opacity. The brush I'm currently using um, is all is pretty watery and um, you know, not right, it already has some, it's already preset to only be so opaque. So if I switch back to my round soft, my soft round brush, um, and I, you know, I if I scribble over here a bit, this is at 100% opacity, right? If I reduce that opacity down to say 38%, you'll see that the maximum I can do is there. But note that when I come back in, um, each st additional stroke, if I lift, if I stop clicking and dragging, each additional stroke will build up to, and eventually it'll get to 100% opacity. The um, 
there's some other options here. You'll see these little tools next to this. If I click on this and I'm using a drawing tablet, um, I can this what this does all of these not this one but this setting and then this setting over here are um, uh, allow us to use pressure to control things. So in this case, pressure can control opacity. So if I brush really lightly, it's very very it's not very opaque, and then when I press really hard, it becomes opaque, right? And so this allows me to, um, right you know, be able to lightly sketch to slightly color something and then press harder, right, to get a darker thing. So, right, again, the drawing tablet really makes that easier. Um, otherwise, you just have to use the, the hard set opacity. Flow. Um, what flow does is if I adjust flow down to, say, 38%, right, it... Um, it allows me to basically, it's sort of like opacity, except um, instead of having to lift up to continue to make it darker, I can continue to make it darker until, right, in the same brush stroke, if that makes sense. So the more times I go over it, right, if I go really low with this, and I come down here somewhere where there's nothing, and I just draw a continuous brush stroke in a circle, you can see Right, it's not very opaque, but then when I hit it again, it's getting darker. Whereas with just setting opacity, what happens is that it, right, there's no buildup, if that makes sense, right? It's just one even layer of opacity. Now, these do work together, right? So whatever the opacity is sets the maximum value that the flow will reach. So if I set it to um, if I set this to, say, you know, 60% opacity, then when I go to do this, right, and I start rolling through this flow, no matter how many times I go over it, I'm only going to ever get to 61% opacity, right? So, um, so these two things work together that way. The other thing that you can do with flow, and I'm going to bring this back to 100%, is if I turn on this option, what this does is it it acts like an airbrush where you get build up if you stay in place or a spray can or something like that. So if I, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger too. Well, that's a lot bigger, but whatever. Um, right, so if I hold still, you can see that, right, it builds up as I'm holding still. So this is another way you can use flow to create something that's, you know, that feels a bit more like um, a real brush because you can, you can move slowly to make it fatter and then move quickly to make it thinner and lighter and then slow down again to make it fatter. And finally, this last option over here, um, there's also brush angle, which um, we're not gonna really worry about here. And there's smoothing right now, right? Smoothing is kind of grayed out. There's nothing I can do with that. So I'm not worried about that. But this last option here, um, what this does, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and set my flow back to 100% just so you can see this setting on its own. This allows me my brush size changes with pressure, right? And so the lighter I touch, the thinner the brush stroke is, the heavier I touch, the fuller it is, right? And so this becomes more like a natural brush where, right, as you press, you're going to press the, the bristles down some, um, even though this brush isn't, you know, necessarily great, right? So now I've made this beautiful <laughs> this beautiful background. Um, so what I'd like you to do is go ahead and continue to experiment this with this, experiment with these things, and just, you know, go ahead and make a background. Um, I'm going to go ahead and increase my brush size. Now note, some brushes you can make really large, and some will max out at a certain number of pixels. And it just really depends on what the type of brush is. So I'm going to turn flow, this, and... So I'm just going to really quickly create something that I'm going to want to use as my as my background. Um, and I'm just going to build up color. Again, you can experiment with different brushes. I'm just trying to work quickly and create something that, you know, has some depth and, and variety to it. The other thing you might want to do while you do this is to um, 
cho change your uh, mode here. Do I want this to darken? All right. Do I want to see what happens if I if I use um, you know screen on this? And again, you know, just, just keep playing. Okay, so, you know, I've got a base layer that, you know, has some, you know, variability and depth, I can still kind of see the canvas through it some, and I'd probably want to work this harder and use more brushes, but I don't want to deal with, um, you know, taking too much time to do this. So, right, so I've been using my base brushes. So how, what other tools do I have that are going to allow me to, you know, sketch out my ideas and, and continue to work? So I've got this background set. Um, I'm going to leave the background alone, and I'm actually going to turn the visibility of that background off if I can. Oh, it's locked. So I'm going to unlock it so it's in the normal layer. Turn the visibility off. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to search for a particular brush. The brush I want, I'm just going to type in pencil. And when I do that, there's a bunch of different options that come up. There's number two pencil, number four H hard, charcoal pencils, right? Conte crayons, etc, etc, etc. So um, I'm going to go with the number two pencil. And once I've done that, you'll see my size of this brush is two pixels, right? That's tiny. Um, I'm going to choose maybe a, you know, a grayish color. doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to increase the size of the brush a little bit so I can kind of see what's going on, right? So, you know, here's my pencil brush. And so what I can do is with this layer, right, I could use this to, you know, if I was going to be sketching, you know, painting a figure or something like that, right, I could use this as, you know, the layer where, um, you know, I try and create that general, um, you know, the posture and body shape and everything that's going on here. And so maybe, you know, here's some hips, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and we'll, you know, and, you know, this is not going to be like a, a super accurate figure, but we'll go ahead and just say it's, you know, somebody sitting, if you remember the sad Keanu meme from what seems like ancient history on the internet now, um, maybe this is like a my rendition of sad Keanu eating a sandwich on a bench. And so, right, so I'm really just doing these rough sketches. He's definitely, you know, hunched over. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do a terrible job, but there's a sandwich. Um, he's really sad, right? And so I'm going to start filling in some of his, you know, some of his body forms. Um, and again, this is a really bad drawing, so um, it's not, the, you know, it's just a sketch to get me started, right? So there's his bench that he's sitting on. He really looks like he's about to fall off of it, but that's all right. Okay. So I've got like a general, you know, rough sketch of his body lined up. And now maybe I want to, I could go in and fill more detail. But again, remember, this is supposed to be, in my case, um, I'm trying to make this quick. And I'm <laughs> making the proportions like not accurate in any way, shape, or form. Um, but that's fine. Okay. So, you know, we've got his face. Here he is. Let's go ahead and... Right, make a couple marks for where his eyes, nose, and mouth will be. And then we're going to go ahead and let's, it's hard to see against the, right, the transparent layer. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to go up to layer at the top of the screen, and I'm going to go down to new fill layer, solid color. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to choose, you know, white, somewhere near white. And then I'm just going to drag this down and drop it below so I can actually see this a little bit better, right? That's a lot easier to look at. And now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and I'm going to select <clears throat> layer one again, right? And so I've got this rough sketch. And so now what's wonderful about digital, right, drawing and illustration is I can just create a new layer and I'm going to actually put the layer, 
so I can see what's going on. I'm going to put the layer that I'm painting on under my pencil lines so that um, while I'm painting, I can kind of still see those outlines on top. And really, I'm just going to start filling in like bolt colors for his body, his pants, his legs, and things like that. So why don't we go ahead and, you know, take some time to do that. I'm going to grab this. This is that pencil. Um, I might just use one of these brushes, but make it bigger and bring the hardness up some. And then I'm just going to choose a color to use to start as like a base, as a base color for his clothing and everything, right? So I'm just going to come in here and brush the day away. This really looks like I'm actually painting with gouache, which is nice. Um, Note that it does right. fill in. I could be using a different brush. There's lots of work I could be doing, but this is going to be pretty sketchy um, just because that's the way it is. So there's his pants. Maybe he's wearing, I don't know, a magenta shirt. Over his massive bulging shoulders. And so I can come in and maybe it's a v-neck, a vt. But you can kind of see how painterly, um, right, with a lot of digital technology, everything is so crisp and clean <clears throat> and isolated, but you can um, make really painterly things. And so, you know, I'm not a... <laughs> I'm not a good painter, but uh, we'll just go through here and, you know, I don't know what, you know, his skin tone necessarily looks like. We'll start with this and then we can always add things onto it. Um, I might make this a little bit larger so that I have a bigger, right, a bigger wash that I'm doing on here. Right, there we go. And... You know, th those are his hands, <laughs> and he's barefoot, right? So there we go. We've got, you know, certain details built up in here. Okay, so then, you know, we can make sure that um, we've got our general body form in here, but you'll notice if I turn off this, right, there are some gaps and things. And so I'm still going to be using this as a guide, right? There's going to be to be highlights, there's going to need to be shadows, or, you know, a lot of work is going to need to be done to con uh, to continue working on this because this is pretty flat. But if I turn on the background um, and hide this thing, right, this actually looks kind of oddly bizarre. Um, and the colors, <laughs> my palette is uh, pretty similar. So with his skin tone, right, there might be that, right, humans typically have a little green in there. So if I roll, um, and I have this set to overlay as my painting mode, right, which is why I'm getting such light things. But if I come in here with a little bit of green on his skin, maybe he's not so, you know, sure about what's going on here. Okay. And then I can come in with, um, I can go back to, right, if I go to this under color, if I go to swatches, it has the most recent colors I've used. So I can come back in here and I can pick. Um, whatever I just used and then go back to color and it should update and then I can say oh I want this to be you know a little bit darker and instead of using overlay maybe I'm gonna go ahead and just use normal um, and shrink this down a bit and my opacity is set to 100 my flow is set to 100 maybe I want to dial that down to something smaller and then I can just come in right and if I wanted to add um, you know, a little bit of volume to this, right? I can pull in a little bit on his feet. And granted, I am doing a really amazing job with this. So, you know, take note. Um, right, so, and maybe, you know, he's got a little stubble on there. I'm going to keep this really simple. I'm not even going to really do eyes or anything. Um, you know, I could give him a, you know, a kind of smudgy hairstyle. 
Oh, that's beautiful. And then, right, there's going to be some shadow on here and a little bit more, you know, darkness in there. And maybe I want to bring, now I want to bring in something a little bit lighter and just kind of, you know, flesh this in a little bit. And you can get the sense of how this process begins to work. And, you know, I'm intentionally, um, all right, trying to work with this. There we go. We can get a little bit of shadow in there. You know there's all these areas where, right, I've got those white that the canvas still sticking through that I'm going to need to deal with. And so I can bring this in and get that a little bit. Okay. And I'm using a huge brush that's really not very hard. So I can scale that down if I want to get, you know, a little bit more control over where I'm placing these colors. Okay, so again, right, this is a process that takes a long time to do well, and so I'm going to give up on doing well um, and um, switch to the next tool. All right, so let's say, you know, this is a masterpiece. I'm really happy with it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and let's say there's just some little bit of a little bit other color in here, maybe some highlights on his, maybe his sleeves are ripping and that's why <laughs> that's why this is going. So I'm just gonna pull in a little bit of warmth in there. Okay. And dear God, his hair. Uh, but that's all right. <laughs> the other thing you can do, right, is you can always use the eraser. Um, so I can use the eraser tool and come in here and just get rid of stuff. Now, you'll see that it's not fully erasing. Um, and that's because I have the opacity set to 51% right now. If I crank that up, I will get rid of everything that's there, right? So I can always come in and like clean things up if I make a mistake, right? Which is really wonderful. Okay, so I've got this general figure here. So now we need to look at, right, the one thing you may have noticed is that, right, it draws on top and it kind of blends in with what's below it, but it's not really a... Um, true mixing of the colors that are on the canvas. So if I go ahead and turn off my pencil lines real quick, right, you can see I've got these colors here. Let's say we wanted to bring something in and we really wanted to be able to mix this together. That's what this other tool under here, the mixer brush, is used for. There is a pencil tool that's just, it just draws like a hard line that's like not aliased. So you can test that out. Color replacement tool um, replaces colors. It's you can experiment with it. Um, I don't really ever use it. Okay, so um, with this tool, again, we can choose whatever brush we want. I am going to snag something in here that's big enough so you can see it. And I'm going to zoom in a touch um, somewhere on the figure. Uh, let's just do it somewhere in here and then scroll this up a touch. Okay, all right, so if I want to use this tool, oh, somehow, oh, I'm back on the eraser. Um, by the way, the eraser is the letter E on the keyboard and the brush is the letter B. And with the brush tool, it'll pop up whatever you've most recently selected here. So I am going to, um, I might actually just keep using this brush. It's just the thick pencil. Um, and I'm going to change this color to something really different so that we can see the impact. Okay, so to start with, we're going to start with one of these middle rounds. Let's actually, let's just go with dry. If I click on dry and I click and drag, you'll see that what happens is um, I can draw and my brush eventually runs out of paint, right? And so this is kind of trying to mimic when you've lightly dipped a brush in paint and you make a stroke and you run out of paint someplace um, in that process, right? So that's sort of what that's meant to do. If I change this dry to light load and then do this, right, my brush stroke is going to be significantly shorter. And you'll note these two things change based on these presets. So my wet is zero and my load is only 5%. If I undo that and I go back to dry, oops, go back to dry, you'll see my load is 50%, which is why I get that longer stroke. If I go to heavy load, 
right? My load's 100%, which basically means I'm going to keep, paint's going to keep coming out until I stop, until I stop. And that is, um, that's basically the same thing that the paintbrush does. So though that's the dry settings. Now the moist settings are a little different. So let's go to moist and you'll see it says wet 10%, load 5% and mix 50%. So if I click on this and drag, you'll see that, right, I'm getting a very different, um, a very, very different um, effect, right? It's not getting, my load is pretty light and but it's it's mixing some with the color underneath, right? And it's um, and you can kind of see it even more pronounced here, right? Where when I pop out, it's the right color, but when I blend in, it mixes and it's actually pulling and moving, right? The underlying color as it mixes with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what the other moist options do. So moist light mix, wet ten, load five, mix zero. Right, so it's not going to really be mixing much, um, but it is wet. And what that wetness means is um, is that the paint that it's it acts as though the the previous strokes, everything that's on here, has wet paint. Right, it's not dried, and so I can um, when I hit this, it's actually interacting with that lower layer. Okay. So um, let's see here. So let's go to moist heavy mix. And so this means the mix is going to be 100%. If I do this, you'll see that I don't really see anything unless I'm painting in areas that don't have a stroke on them already. But if I paint over something that does, then it's mixing almost 100% with that, right? Like I can't really see. Um, you know, but I can kind of see when I come over here that there is some effect, right? It's it's really kind of blending and blurring the the things that are on the screen. So let's go ahead and go to wet. So if I just go to wet, wet's 50%, loads 50, mixes 50, right? This is the even one. And what this does is it begins to make this like, right, like a wet oil painting where I can bring my loaded brush in and, and it smears around everything that I've done previously, right? And I feel like these are some of the tools that really allow you to make painterly gestures and marks in Photoshop, right? Because then I can come in here and I can change this color to, you know, maybe I want it to be more of like a, almost a yellowish highlight, right? And I can bring these in and I can start to work, um, you know, work more color in here and, and there's a lot you can do that makes for a really nice, um, a really nice effect if you have solid painting skills. <laughs> um, so there's wet. If we do wet light mix, right? It's wet and it gives load, but it doesn't mix as much with the colors underneath, right? So it'll smear things around a little bit. You can kind of see how it, how it's doing that, but it's not um, really mixing with these other colors super intensely. If I do wet heavy mix, then you don't really see the load very much, right? You don't see the color at all, um, but it really smears that smears that um, paint around and mixes it all together as it's working. Okay. And then um, we've got very wet, right? So this is, you know, like you just poured a bucket of paint on a canvas and now you're you've poured two or three buckets of paint and you're just smearing them around, right? It's really, really sloppy. Um, so things blend really nicely this way if you're trying to do, you know, layer a bunch of different colors and blend them, blend them together to create something more complex, um, right? This is um, one of the tools that works. This is the setting that's gonna work really well for that. And remember, right, right if you're just off out in the middle of nowhere, um, it's going to give you whatever that true color is. So very wet, very wet light mix is going to, right, not mix as much, but it is really, right, still really wet and you get some blending. Um, and then, you know, the heavy mix, 
Again, you don't really see that foreground color so much that you've got on your brush, um, but it, because it mixes so intensely with whatever you've got um, going on underneath. Okay, so right, we haven't made a masterpiece. In fact, we've probably made a monstrosity. Um, if I turn this off and zoom out, right, this is uh, you know probably the best piece of work I've ever done. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, I'm trying to do this quickly and make it not be the longest tutorial in the history of all tutorials. Uh, so, um, yeah, what I would suggest is really experimenting with these things and figuring out, you know, what all the settings do. And if you enjoy drawing and illustrating, um, how you can use Photoshop to do that without making it look like this nightmare that, that I created here. Right. Um, and if you haven't ever used a, um, uh, if you haven't ever used a drawing tablet before, I highly suggest it. It does really make, right, um, gestural, uh, gestural things work out well. So yeah, this is a, a hideous and horrible nightmare <laughs> of a drawing, um, of a painting, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you can get some sense of how you can use these tools together um, and layer things to uh, to make something that probably looks much better than what I've been <laughs> what I've been what I've been uh, making. All right, and uh, you know, just remember, you too can make something this beautiful with Photoshop. <laughs>